welcome i welcome you all to the new session of mathematical physics where in this session we shall be studying about the complex variables so complex variables are generally studied where it helps in the calculations of the integrals where the integrals are having the limits from minus infinity to infinity a particular contour is defined over which we have to integrate our integrals so the complex variables helps us to calculate the integrals also so let's see about the basics of the complex variables so in the complex variable we have a certain number this number will be consisting of a real part and an imaginary part so when we have a number suppose we have a number z so z is equal to x plus iota y so in this number x plus iota y this x part is called as the real part and this y part since it is associated with the term iota which has a value of under root of minus 1 so this iota is a complex part and the coefficient associated with the iota is an imaginary number so a quantity which is represented in the form of z is equal to a quantity which is represented as z is equal to x plus iota y is called a complex variable so we can represent a complex variable in the cartesian form in the polar form or in the exponential form now we can see here that our z was written as x plus iota y so x was called the real part y was the imaginary part and x and y are the cartesian coordinates also so if we want to plot on the cartesian coordinates where x is the x axis which is the real axis and y axis will be called as the imaginary axis and if we want to locate a point p having the coordinates x and y so it will represent the same number that will be equal to z is equal to x plus iota y so in this way we can represent our complex variable in the cartesian coordinates also and this representation that z is equal to x plus iota y is called the cartesian form of the complex variable similarly now we know that we can represent our x in terms of r and theta so we have that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta so you know that if we plot a graph such that this is x axis y axis and we plot a point p on it with the coordinates of p r r and theta mm -hmm. so if we resolve our components x and y in terms of r th r and theta we know that this x is equal to this angle is theta which is making with the p point so we know that this x can be written as r cos theta and the y coordinate can be written as r sin theta such that if we square and add our x and y we get r is equal to root under root x square plus y square and if we divide our y by x we get that tan theta is equal to y by x or we can represent that theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x so so when we represent our x as r cos theta and y as r sin theta so when we represent our x as r cos theta and y as r sin theta taking r common we can write that z is equal to r times cos theta plus iota sin theta so this is the representation of the complex variable in the polar form now we also know that this cos theta plus iota sin theta can be written in the exponential form as e to the power iota theta so we have our function z is equal to r e to the power iota theta which is known as the exponential form of the complex variable so you can see how complex variables are so important that the complex variables can be represented in the cartesian form it can be represented in the polar form or in the exponential form now this complex variable can also be expressed as a function of some variable so let us now find the function of a complex variable 
since a complex variable is represented as a function so a function of that complex variable is called as f of z and this f of z is written or it is denoted by another quantity which is w so w is a function of z so since a function of a complex variable will also be a complex number it will also consist of a real part and imaginary part so we can also write it as w is equal to f of z which is equal to u plus iota v so u is our real part and v is our imaginary part and here both u and v are the functions of x and y now let us study have a look into a limit of the function of complex variables so by the word limit means that if we we are having the complex variable function of the complex variable as f of z so if we take a neighboring point z not and we suppose that our z is tending to z not then the function will be a single valued function and it will have only one particular value at z tending to z not so this is the meaning of the limit of the function so we have written here that f of z be a single valued function defined at all the points in some neighborhood of the point z not means if we take if we have this portion and this is our z so if we take some neighborhood point of z that is this is the z not point so if we want to calculate the value of the function at this z not point then we should certainly get the value of z f of z so this is the meaning of the limit of the function of the complex variable so if f of z be a single valued function defined at all the points in some neighborhood at point z not then limit z tending to z not f of z is equal to w not because f of z was equal to w you know that you can see here that f of z is equal to w so when z is tending to z not then this w will tend to w not it will have a certainly fixed value it will be defined and it will have a single valued function so this is the meaning of the limit of the complex variable so let us now look at the continuity and the differentiability of the complex variable so for the continuity function what we say that if we calculate the value of a function at a some neighboring point either it could be on the left hand side of that of that particular value or on the right hand side or we find the value for that particular point so the function should give the same value so if it is having a same value for all these points we said that the function is a continuous function so the definition of the continuity goes such that if z is said to be continuous at the point z not if for a given positive number epsilon there exists a delta such that if we take such that if we take the modulus of the difference of the fz and fz dot then it should be certainly less than epsilon for all positive points of z of the domain satisfying that z minus z dot modulus is less than delta so fz is said to be continuous at z dot if limit z tending to z not f of z is equal to f of z not means that if we have a point say if this is a number line this is z not and this is the number line for z so if we calculate the value of fz at a left hand limit at the right hand point or at f of z not so if we calculate the values on these three points either it be the left hand side or the right hand side or at the z not value the function should not be differing by epsilon where epsilon is just nearly tending to zero it is a very very small number so such type when this limit z tending to z not fz is equal to fz not then we say that our function is continuous to the differentiability so 
differentiability means also that if we calculate the differential of the function we should have one particular value of the differential so if fz is a single valued function of the variable then f dash z is equal to limit delta z tending to zero f of z plus delta z minus f of z upon delta z so this is the definition of the differentiability so the limit should exist it should not tend to infinity it should have a particular value and also that the differential should be independent of the path along which the delta z is taken to be zero so if we we can elaborate this point here that if we have a point p where the coordinates are z and this q point is taken to be having the coordinates of z plus dz means the p is a fixed point and the q is a neighboring point along which the z is changing its coordinate so we can move this q point either through a straight line or we can move it in steps as you can see here that first we go along the imaginary line or then we go along the x axis or we go from a straight line or we move in a parabolic path whatever path you follow to reach q the value of the differential of the function should be same it should not depend upon the path follow so when we reach p from q along any of the curve path or through straight line it should be independent of the path followed and if we have the same value of f of dash f dash z for any of the path follow we say that the differential of that function exists and if we have different values for different path then we shall say that the differential of the function is not existing because the differential should be a single valued function for all the path followed so let us consider a numerical related to the differentiability of the function so we have a function here as f of z is 4x plus y plus iota times minus x plus 4y and we have to discuss the differentiability or we have to calculate df by dz so now if we look at this function what we see here we see here that this 4x plus y is not associated with iota term whereas the coefficient minus x plus 4y is the coefficient of iota so when we have such type of terms we can identify the real part as well as the imaginary part so 4x plus y is the real part which is represented by u and minus x plus 4y is the imaginary part and we are representing this as v so now this was our f of z we can also calculate f of z plus dz because ultimately what we have to calculate we have to calculate the differentiability so the differentiability is given by the formula delta f by delta z is f of z plus dz minus fz by delta z so first of all we are calculating our f of z plus dz since there is a small change in z so a small change in z means there is a small change in x and y so the change in x is represented by delta x and the change in y is represented by delta y so we change x by x plus delta x so we get the equation for f of z plus dz as 4x plus delta x plus y plus delta y minus iota x plus delta x plus 4 iota y plus delta y now we take the difference of f of z plus delta z and f of z we get as 4 delta x plus delta y minus iota delta x plus 4i delta y now our delta f by delta z will be nothing but the difference divided by delta z and this delta z can be written as delta x plus iota delta y because our z is x plus iota y and on differentiating our z we get delta x plus iota delta y so now we have to check the differentiability so already we have discussed that if we check the differentiability then when we move from p to q so whatever path we follow for the delta z the value of the function should come out to be same so now in this question what we are doing that this p is our fixed point so one time i choose my q to be at this point and 
along this straight line path, the delta Z will occur and I will check the differentiability along this path. I choose my Q point to be along the real axis and along this real axis, delta Z is changing. And for this, I check my differentiability. Similarly, I move my Q point to the Y axis or the imaginary axis and my delta Z will change and I will again check my differentiabilities. So for all these three parts, I will check my differentiability if my value of the differential comes out to be same. So I will say that the differential is existing and it is a single valued function. So now let's move to the different cases. So I move along the real axis that is PQ. So when I move along the real axis PQ, what I find here that only the X coordinate is changing. So X is changing from X plus Delta X, whereas there is no change in Y. So Y remains same. So Delta Y will be equal to zero. Only X coordinate is changing. So we know that Delta Z is Delta X plus Iota Delta Y. And since Delta Y is equal to zero, so our Delta X will be equal to Delta Z. So from this equation, what I find here, I substitute the value of delta y equal to zero in the equation. So this delta y cancels, this also goes to zero, this also goes to zero. So what I get, I get it as four delta x minus iota delta x upon delta x. My delta x becomes common in the numerator and gets cancelled with the denominator to get a value of four minus iota. So I get a value of four minus iota for the uh, PQ line, which is along the real axis. Similarly, if I consider the PQ dash along the imaginary axis. So when I move along the imaginary axis, the Y is changing as Y plus Delta Y, but there is no change in X. So the X coordinate remains the same. Therefore, Delta X will be zero along the imaginary axis PQ dash. So when I substitute Delta X equal to zero, my Delta Z is coming out to be Iota Delta Y because delta x is equal to zero. So when I substitute for delta f by delta z, delta x will be gone, this iota delta x will be gone, and this delta x will be gone. So I get a value of delta f by delta z as delta y plus four iota delta y upon iota delta y. Similarly, delta y is taken out and canceled from the numerate denominator. I get as one plus four iota by iota. Simplifying again, I get the same result that I got for the real axis that is four minus of iota. Now, if I consider my path to be along the uh, PQ dash line, which is an equation of the line inclined at an angle of 45 degree. So the equation of the line is Y is equal to X. If Y is equal to X, then my delta Y is equal to delta x. So I make all these substitutions in delta z and as well as in delta f by delta z. So if delta z is equal to delta x plus iota delta y and I change my y coordinates to x coordinates, so I'm replacing delta y by delta x. So I get the equation as 1 plus iota times delta x. And similarly, my from my delta f by delta z equation, what I get, I replace delta y by delta x. So I get that delta X is coming out common and gets canceled with the denominator of delta X. So I get the equation as five plus three iota upon one plus iota. Rationalizing it, would I get my answer as four minus of iota? So we have seen here that if I choose any of the path, whether it would be PQ, PQ dash or PQ double dash. So I get the same result of delta F by delta Z, which is equal to four minus iota. So I can say that my function F of Z is differentiable at a point Z in a given region. So it is same in all the three cases. So the function is differentiable. So in this way, you can calculate the differentiability or discuss the differentiability of a complex variable function. So let us discuss another problem related to the differentiability. So here the function is given to be f of z, which is x square y into y minus iota x upon x four plus y square, where this equation is valid when z is not tending to zero. And the equation is function is zero when z is set equal to zero. So we have to discuss the differentiability df by dz at a point z is equal to zero. 
So discuss the differentiability, we have to calculate the limit f of z minus of f0 upon z because the point given to be discussed at was z is equal to 0. So this is the formula for the differential. So now we shall substitute the value of f of z. So f of z means that the z is not equal to 0. So substituting the value of f of z, so the value of f of z is x square y into y minus iota x upon x4 plus y square. And f of 0 means that the point is z is equal to 0. And we know that for this f of 0, it is given that it is equal to 0. And in the denominator, we have z. And we know that z is equal to x plus iota y. So I substitute these values of fz, f0, and z. And now I simplify my equation. So I rationalize it by x plus iota y because I am just uh, taking out minus iota common. So again, it comes x plus iota y. So x plus iota y and x plus iota y gets cancelled here with a minus iota outside. So you can see this here, this term gets cancelled and I'm left out with minus iota x square y upon x4 plus y square. So to check the differentiability, we have to consider different path. So let us now consider a path, a general equation of the straight line that is y is equal to mx. So I substitute y is equal to mx. So when y is equal to x, so my z will also be the equation in x. So I represent that this limit x tending to 0. So now I put for y, y is equal to mx. So my equation gets transformed by minus iota x square into mx upon mx square plus x to the power 4. So what I see here, I see here that I get a quantity because x square will be coming out common from the numerator and denominator it gets cancelled. And the left out term is minus iota mx upon m square plus x square. So since there is an x involved in the numerator and when I put the value of x to be equal to 0, so the value of my differential comes out to be 0. Similarly, if I consider an another general path, so I consider a parabolic path y is equal to x square. So if I consider y is equal to x square, similarly, because z was tending to 0 and z is equal to x plus iota y, so the equation will be now in terms of x. And since z is tending to 0 means that x will tend to 0 now. So substituting the value of y is equal to x square, what I get here, I get here as minus iota x square into x square upon x4 plus x4. So both x4s get common and come out and gets cancelled and I get a result as minus of iota by 2. Since no x was there in the expression, so when we put the value of x equal to 0, so we get a term of minus iota by 2. And we can see that the f dash z has two different values. For one path, it is having a value 0. For the different path, it is having a value of minus iota by 2. So for different part, the f by dz has having different values and we will say that the f of z is not differential at z is equal to 0. So for the previous question, what we found that the value was same for all the three paths, whereas for this question, it is different for different path. So for choosing the path, what you I will suggest here that uh, see the denominator. In the denominator here, you are having x4 plus y square. So try to uh, choose a value of the path such that the y coordinate equals the x value. So here, you can see here it is x square square plus y square. So if you choose y equal to x square, so the denominator will have the same term, will have the like terms. So try to take the value of y such that it becomes a like term with the uh, neighboring one. So that is why the path chosen here is the y is equal to x square. Similarly, if had it been it be x to power 6, so the path chosen would be in that case would be y is equal to x cube. So in this way, you can choose your path for calculating or uh, checking